What a past couple of months it's been for NVIDIA, release after release after release. And now a new one, but this one is a little bit different, the Titan X Mark II. So let me take you over it, some opinions, specs and that kind of thing. So NVIDIA are claiming three times the performance of previous GPUs with this new Pascal based entry. Now that could mean anything, that's not necessarily saying you've got three times the performance of the old Titan X under the new Titan X's hood, but we never know with what's been going on lately with this much smaller um, kind of uh, node and much smaller manufacturing process. Now this unfortunately only has GDDR5X as opposed to HBM. HBM is more expensive and less utilised unfortunately and we really are waiting for that generation 2 in order to reap the full benefits. We have got 12 gigs of it though, which is like all you could possibly need and 4 gigs, 30% uh, more than you get on the 1070 or 1080. Now do excuse me, I'm going to be reading the boring specs of a list here because otherwise I am going to get things wrong. We've got 3,584 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1417 uh, and a boost of 1531. Of course you are going to be able to overclock this card, so don't take those numbers too to heart if you will. Uh, it's Going to be a, it should be a good overclocking card, especially with some really nice aftermarket shrouds on there. We've got 10 gigabits uh, memory transfer speed, so that's equating to around about 480 gigabytes per second, which is absolute madness. And all of that is, of course, on a 384-bit memory bus. Nothing like groundbreaking. We've seen that before on quite a few of NVIDIA's previous cards. Now unlike the 1060, this does support SLI, but it's instead NVIDIA's new high bandwidth SLI support. Because graphics cards nowadays are getting so evolved and so powerful, they're actually, according to NVIDIA, are needing more bandwidth. And NVIDIA have actually said the reason that they're pushing uh, SLI only on their higher end cards is to allow optimizations for people spending more. Because really, getting two 1060s is pointless when you could get one 1070. And that's why NVIDIA aren't allowing uh, SLI setups on their 1060 cards. Now one thing with this as well, it does support similar simultaneous multi-projection which is a new technology NVIDIA are pushing and this graphics card is very much the ultimate card for VR that's another one of their major selling points but the Titan X is very much so a professional card for creative professionals whether that be video work 3D rendering all of that kind of thing and this is no doubt going to crush it in the uh, cinema 4D benchmark but are you ready for this next one it supports up to 8 K displays, that's seven over 7,600 pixels wide, which is absolute madness. We went 4K, 5K, now 8K, which is great to see because obviously uh, the red camera, the red dragon, the red weapons, uh, those kind of things from uh, the red camera company, a lot of cinema cameras, are now adding the ability to shoot in 6 or 8K resolutions. In terms of TDP, this graphics card consumes uh, 250 watts and has a maximum operating temperature of 94 degrees Celsius and takes one 8-pin and one 6-pin power. So once again, a very efficient uh, graphics card as well. But overall, what a beast of a card. This thing should overclock like mad. It should be just incredible. Now, it really is gonna be interesting to see where this price kind of falls in against the 1070 and the 1080. We've got no kind of real solid pricing information from Nvidia yet, and until it really hits the shelves, we can't really judge as to how much it's gonna cost. The 1070 was meant to come in at one price, but came more like $100 more, because demand was low and, uh, sorry, demand was high and supply was low. And that's no doubt what's gonna happen with this. Now, to me, I just hope that NVIDIA don't make this obsolete like they made the original Titan X obsolete. I think the keeping the same naming scheme, the Titan X and then the Titan X, is a little bit of a weird one considering we went from the Titan Z to the Titan X. The Titan, Titan Z, then the Titan X. It is a little bit of a funny one, but maybe that's because we haven't got a major, major difference in this card. I know they're both three times performance, but that very well could mean three times the performance of a GTX 970. They didn't say three times the performance of a Titan, uh, the original Titan X. And if it did perform three times that of the original Titan X, well, first I'd probably faint, and secondly, Nvidia's marketing team would be over it like a rash. So please don't think this is going to perform three times like the Titan X, the original Titan X. What a stupid naming decision from NVIDIA. Just what can be on the website, the new Titan X, and then the next one comes out, the new, new Titan X, the latest Titan X. <laughs> Probably not the best naming scheme from NVIDIA, but it does of course feature their new cooler and all that kind of thing. So if you do like this video, make sure to drop a like rating and of course to subscribe. I've got some very exciting videos coming over the next six weeks and I'll see you in the next Geek or What 